Hello, I'm Dr. Soren Maloney, and I'm a freelance engineer and consultant. I'm here with Dr. James Klausner, who's a professor in thermal fluid sciences at the University of Florida. He also works with the local Florida electric utilities and water management district to commercialize a new desalination pro process. So I'd like to welcome Professor Klausner, and thank you for uh, joining us today. Soren, thank you very much, and it's certainly my pleasure to be here today. Professor Klausner, what are some of the problems that you're working on right now at, at the University of Florida? One of the problems, as you mentioned, that we worked on was um, trying to develop new desalination processes, which is essentially taking saline water and converting it to fresh water that uh, could be used for life. Uh, sustainability. And the whole idea was to use waste heat or low-grade heat that's usually tossed away and not used for anything else but could be used to drive fresh water production as a sustainable type technology. In addition to that, we're working on a really fascinating process which uses concentrated solar energy to drive synthetic fuel production. If successful, how, how would your research impact the lives of people? We are working on a new technology that requires less energy consumption than the conventional technologies, and therefore it provides a cheaper product Correct. and a more sustainable project, product because it can be driven from waste heat. And where do you see your field uh, heading in the next couple of years? We're in a very interesting period in history where technology is exploding at such a rapid pace yeah. and a pace that is unparalleled in history. I think it's being driven by the fact that the world as a whole, there's more globalization, there's more um, interaction um, on an international scale, yeah. and we have limited resources on the planet. And I think our major challenges ahead are how do we sustain the quality of life that we currently have with um, limited resources and a growing population. What sort of problems that you think still remains to, to be solved like by researchers in your field? Well, my particular field in thermal engineering, there's it's, in, it's, it's a great field to be in because <coughs> it touches almost all branches of engineering because everything needs cooling and thermal management. Um, if you're building devices, you're building machines, um, they run best at a specified temperature and they require thermal management. So for example, um, we the electrical engineering discipline has been fantastic in developing much higher powered uh, computing technology on these tiny small chips yeah. and they keep getting smaller and smaller Explodence. and smaller yeah. packed with more and more transistors. Well each one of those transistors dissipate heat. Now the challenge has become not how small we can make them or how many we can pack but how do we get rid of all the heat so those um, fantastic chips they build don't burn out. So that's yeah. referred to as electronics or microelectronics thermal management. And so, um, you know, that's an area that we focus on. Um, with the boom of information technology, you find that many companies have mm -hmm. rooms full of computer Computers. servers. Yeah. They, those all generate heat. Well, how do we capture that heat that's being dissipated, not throw it out, but reuse it to make power. Based on what you know now about your field, what do you wish you had known when you were starting off in your career? What I would like to convey to uh, young engineers entering the profession is that it pays to have patience. And um, when we get into the engineering profession, we have high ideals and we all want to change the world. However, um, it, the world doesn't change overnight, but yeah. if you set some goals and you stick with your goals and you're persistent and you work hard, your goals are eventually realized. The other thing that I would strongly recommend to students in the engineering profession is get a solid grasp on fundamentals of engineering because you can never ever learn the entire profession. 
it's impo I mean, there, it's the rate of knowledge creation is just so immense. Yeah. One person can't do that. But if you get a solid understanding of fundamentals, you can use those fundamentals to move into different different disciplines as you need to. It's very important to keep pace with the technological developments. They're rapid. They're growing all the time. And if you're a practitioner, just keep up with what's going on. Yeah. It's very difficult to do, by the way. Um, I constantly worry that I'm becoming a dinosaur in the profession and <laughs> have to look in the mirror and take a reality check every now and then and uh, make sure I'm keeping up. Professor Klosner, I'd like to thank you for sharing your knowledge and experience with us and I'm sure without a doubt it will be valuable uh, for a lot of young and early career engineers. It's a great time to be in the engineering field and it's greatly my pleasure to be here and thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Pleasure.